Welcome to What is Going Om for new thought from the edge of Om. Each week on Om Time's flagship radio show, veteran broadcaster, author, and media consultant Sandy Sedgbeer conducts thought provoking interviews with inspirational authors, artists, musicians, scientists, speakers, and filmmakers who are working at the point where spirituality and science meet consciousness at the very edge of Om. Here is your host, Sandy Sedgbeer. Hello. With a growing body of research strongly suggesting that sound waves could be the future of biomedical research, diagnosing and treatment, tonight's show is going to be about sound, science and medicine. And with me are award-winning composer and peace activist Yuval Ron and pioneering integrative health practitioner Dr Richard Gold, whose company Meta Mindfulness Music specializes in creating original music informed by ancient wisdom traditions and the most current advances in neuroscience and music therapy research. And in between, we'll be playing clips from their latest double album, Voyaging Through the Chakras, which features a series of transformative guided meditations from Lucinda Clare, sublime music by Yuval Ron, embedded subliminal and affirmations by Dr. Gold, designed to entrain your brain to its natural state of peace, and mantras whispered by the Himalayan master, Swami Purna, all of which is designed to guide the soul towards illumination. With our one, Dr. Richard Gold, welcome. It's good to have you both back on the show. Thank you so much, much, Andy. So, Richard, let's start with you. You've spent many years working in the fields of applied neuroscience and sound. In the two years since we last spoke, science has made rapid strides in researching more advanced applications of sound in medicine. Um, you know, we spoke on the last show about the growing body of research and how physicians were beginning to prescribe it for heart ailments, brain dysfunction, learning disabilities, autism, depression, PTSD, Alzheimer's and more. So. Can you bring us up to speed on some of the latest breakthroughs that have happened since then? Well, I think it's just a continuation and an acceleration of what we've seen with even more scientific verification. Um, There seems to be a growing interest uh, uh, at all levels, both governmental with the NIH, through research people, and then individuals like ourselves to explore this field. Um, We're a small private company, so we don't have the funding like you see in hospitals. Uh, with MR, functional MRIs and uh, things of that nature. Uh, we did conduct research on, on measuring energy in the meridians, the Chinese acupuncture meridians, and we definitely saw that our music had a beneficial balancing effect. So what I would say in, in summation is this is a growing field. There's more and more interest um, on all levels, both scientific and spiritual, and I think we're just at the beginning of it. Um, and I, I'm just so excited to see what's coming in the increased number of people that are involved. Yuval, over the past few years, more musicians have been speaking publicly about the healing effects of music. Deva Primal and Miten recently held a series of live Facebook events with world-renowned physicians on this topic. What among all the emerging research is currently exciting you the most? Yes, uh, Sandy, one of the most exciting research comes from Japan, from the University of in Kyoto, where uh, last year, for the first time, they, they managed to alter genes with sound, with sound waves. They actually managed to program genes to change. Now, this is something that can have incredible impact on future med- medicine to prevent uh, genetic diseases, and this is with n- non-invasive technologies. You know, you expose the patient to sound wave. Another, uh, the c- most cutting-edge uh, research in cancer, uh, f- looking for medicine for cancer, is a research group that uses sound waves to destroy cancer cells. And the concept is, you know, for the listeners. It's really accessible to think about it as um, as if you have a soprano opera singer coming into your room, and there's wine glasses on the table, and different wine glasses in different shapes. And imagine 
a female opera singer starts singing and going higher and higher and higher in pitch, and she sings really, really high and really intensely, and suddenly one of the wine glasses would burst into pieces. What, what caused the damage to that glass? What, what shattered that glass to pieces? It's the sound wave. The opera singer got to a certain frequency and a certain volume that cause specific mass of glass to shatter to pieces. And this is a natural phenomena. And now doctors are looking into using that very simple natural phenomena to use sound to go into the body of somebody who's sick and only targeting the cancer cells. So no side effects, no other cells like hair cells or nails cells, no other cells would be uh, damaged. Only the particular cells that are the cancer cells would be destroyed by the sound with no side effects. Imagine, imagine the day that this technology will be released and people would go into a clinic and lay down and expose themselves to sound and walk out of the clinic cancer-free with no side effects. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, corollary to this is that the cancer cells actually have a different frequency than the heal healthy cells around mm -hmm. them. And mm -hmm. so you're able mm -hmm. to measure that frequency and see the aberrant cells and then target your uh, sound waves specifically to the cells that have that aberrant yeah. vibration. Right. It, it's interesting how it's opening up so many new fields. I mean, every time I talk to you guys, I, you know, it sends me off on a, uh, you know, I have to go and do lots and lots of research all of which is absolutely fascinating to me. And I was reading about um, some the fields of optogenetics and sonogenetics and how they've been using light for some time um, to control genes and nerve cells by activating light-sensitive proteins with laser light. But now they've found that the sonogenetics actually goes deeper into the body, and so they can do so much more with it. Absolutely. There's been recent uh, research that's just been published that the brain is producing biophotons, which actually there's information traveling in our brains. It's light. It's not biochemical and it's not just vibration. It's actually light energy. And they've noted that our brains will, will pass over a billion photons per second. And this, the, the implications of this are marvelous, both on a spiritual and on a healing level. Mm. There, now, there was one thing you said earlier that just sparked a thought in me. You talked about, um, uh, you know, the frequencies and cancer. And um, there's a lot of research to, to show and training being done on dogs who can actually smell cancer. And given that dogs are highly um, sensitive to high frequency sound, it makes you wonder whether they're not so much selling it as um, smelling it as tuning into it. It could well, be. Yeah. It could be that the dog. We think the dog smelling it, but the dog actually hearing very high frequencies. Yeah. Uh, you know that that reminds me of something that um, comes from mysticism and from the ancient East, and 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 I'm mentioning it because uh, part of my expertise is. Uh, as a scholar of, of Middle Eastern mysticism and sacred sound, is part of what I do is uh, I, I work with neuroscientists to see what scientific research is actually confirming the knowledge or the message, the wisdom that we, we found in the ancient Middle Near East and the Far East. And so one of the things that uh, were mentioned in the East back, back in biblical time is that certain human beings could hear the sound of the planets, of the stars. And this is just the same as the dogs that hearing very high frequencies. Now, the, the planets, the stars, the ancient people claimed that there is a certain sound that comes from the stars, and only few people could hear it. And it was extremely high and extremely low. And one of the persons that, according to Islamic tradition, actually, is the one that could hear it is King David, 
and his son, King Solomon. And King David, um, according to the Islamic mis- mystical tradition, King David was, was able to write the psalms to compose all the music, the sacred poetry and music for the first temple in Jerusalem was because he was inspired by the sound that he heard from the stars and the planets. Now we are living in a time that scientists and space scientists actually are recording sound vibration that comes from the planets around us, from the stars. They actually, there is sound, it's rec- recordable now, and it's very low and very high in the, the extreme ends of our uh, ability to hear. So That's interesting you know, you because could, yeah. some, of the, some of the research I read about uh, the use of sound for destroying cancer cells is they did a high frequency and a low frequency because either one alone didn't destroy the cancer cell walls, but together they did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do they know why? Why together? I'm not sure well, about the well, why. I think they just were... Go ahead, Yuval. Yeah. Uh, for, for my understanding um, is that uh, to, to shatter a particular kind of mass, you need a particular specific kind of frequencies, and, and, and it, it, it's a very long process to find which frequency works and which frequency doesn't. And so, and the volume, it's not just the frequency, which, uh, which means the frequency is how, how fast or how slow a sound vibration moves through the air. This is one element. The second element is the volume. So you need to have the right volume, which is, we call it the gain, and the right frequency, which is the vibration. Now, Sometimes you need the combinations of two frequencies to put such intense pressure on a certain mass for it to shatter. And they, they, they had uh, success in combining more than one frequency in finding it, hmm. finding what works. And, and it has to do with the amount of pressure that you expose a certain mass a certain object, a certain cell, the, the, the vibration puts pressure on it. And it has to be a very particular amount of pressure and a very particular amount of volume in order for it to break. Hmm. Yeah. And that's the, see, that's the, with the cancer cells, is you're actually exploding the cell wall so that the, the inside of the cell runs out and so it, does, it no longer has life. It's right, so, it, cease. so it's not as though it's exploding it and cancer can then spread. It literally is killing it. Yes. Yeah. Now, together, you have created several musical projects, your Meta Music Medicine series, which features brain entrainment music for a number of specific ailments, your dosha music series, which takes listeners on an oral journey through the doshas of Ayurvedic medicine. You've got your six healing sounds of Chinese medicine series, which is based on the philosophy of Chinese medicine and the elements. And now your new musical medicine for the soul album, Voyage Through the Chakras, which combines several elements, including guided meditations, mantras, and embedded subliminal affirmations. What inspired you to produce this new album? Well, if I may go first, Dr. Gold. Um, Please. Uh, th- this uh, project started when uh, one of my friends and colleagues, Lucinda Clare, approached me, and she said that uh, she got uh, the music of Water, which is a uh, an album that Dr. Gold and myself created as part of the elements, uh, the Six Healing Sounds mm-hmm. of Qigong. And one of them is water, and I brought it as a gift uh, to Lucinda Clares and her husband, uh, who is a friend of mine. And I said, uh, you know, my children have grown up listening to this when they go to bed, and they, they happen to have more peaceful sleep, sleeping with this music, because Dr. Gold recommended that they would sleep with water, and indeed it worked very well for them. So I bought it as a gift for the child, the little girl of Lucinda Clare and Daniel Farlado, who are film producers in Los Angeles. And Lucinda Clare is also a spiritual uh, coach, and she's a yogi, and she's a meditation teacher. And so after two years, 
Lucinda calls me and she said that actually she's the one who's using the water album every night. She goes to sleep with the with water. She's just addicted to it. She it just works for her so well. And and her experience with that music made her envision doing a chakra meditation album because she's been teaching her students uh, about the chakras and leading them on guided imagery to invoke the qualities of each of the chakras. And she said, wouldn't it be wonderful if you could create music for that? And I, I said, you know, this is, I find it inspiring from a musical point of view right away. Uh, the chakras, each chakra have a different energy, it has different colors, it has different um, tastes and 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 uh, all kinds of poetic imagery that associated with it. So for me as a composer, it was immediately uh, uh, inspiring. But uh, after I hang up with Lucinda, I start thinking about Dr. Gold, and something inspired me to to call Lucinda back. And I said, you know what? Let let me talk to Dr. Gold and see if he would be interested to join us for this. Maybe he would be willing to produce it and and will be a trio, you know, I, I feel we need three, three for this journey. And Lucinda was very open to that. She said, yes, please. And, and uh, we weren't sure that Dr. Gold would be interested to take it on because years ago when Dr. Gold and I started working, interestingly enough, the first project that I proposed to work on was the chakras. And Dr. Gold at the time told me, no, there, there are so many projects, there's so many music for the Shaka's albums, I, I'm not interested in creating another one. I'm, I'm more interested in things like the doshas and the six healing sounds. And and so my expectations, my, my hopes were very low. And I was so pleasantly surprised that after Dr. Gold heard about Lucinda Clare and after he checked her out and looked into it, he agreed to take on the project. And it ended up being a great team. And I want to hold you there, you Val, for a few yeah. moments because we have to go to break shortly. And what I want to do, a little cliffhanger for our listeners, because I love we want to hear more about how this album came about. But I want to play us out with a clip from um, Voyage Through the Chakras, uh, the uh, track on the solar plexus chakra. We're going to play us out with that because I want in the second half to play that again with a little twist. So if we could have that piece of music now. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. 
I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Hi, this is New Age Grammy winner Paul Avgerinos. Thanks for listening to Home Times Radio, and please support my peaceful healing music with a purchase at iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you shop for fine music. Just put my name into the search engine, Paul Avgerinos, A, V like Victor, G like George, E, R, I, N, O, S. You can also visit me at roundskymusic.com. Thanks for listening, and I'm wishing you the brightest of blessings. I am Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family, and then, boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee, and they recycle you to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back, and apologies for that little hiccup before the break. Yuval, Richard, please continue with the story of the evolution of Voyage Through the Chakras and how Lucinda came to uh, be deep, more deeply involved with the project. Okay. Yes, well, I, 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 would like, I would like just to uh, finish my part of the story, uh, Rick, saying that be because I was aware that Dr. Gold was did not wish to to have a chakra music album that is like anything out there, uh, I felt and I was inspired to look for ways to create an album that is unlike anything that there is out there for chakras. And with the guided imagery and the poetic uh, uh, writing of Lucinda, the rich poetic guided imagery and her voice, and the nine different international master musicians that we hired all over the world to come and record on this album, I feel that we managed to create something that is is different, and uh, and we're very excited that it it uh, you know it was in July it was number ten in the top 100 albums in New Age and world music all over the world, number ten uh, in the top ten top hundred. Uh, so the response has been incredible. They're playing it on the radio, which is something that we didn't even expect. Uh, people are meditating to it. Um, hundreds of people, thousands of people are meditating to it daily. Uh, so it's very, 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 very um, rewarding to have done this journey and reach what we've reached. You have two CDs. Um, you have the music on one CD, and then on the second CD, you have uh, Lucinda doing the guided meditations over the music. You also have um, mantras and chanting um, on the album, which is um, it really is quite different than anything I've heard before. Richard, do you want to add something to what Yuval was saying about the evolution of this album? Yes. Um, I, again, when we first started to work together and we're looking for our first project and the, the chakras came up, that was my response, that it, it's been done by a number of people. Um, th as this became our fourth project we were looking at, and I had worked with Yuval and seen how unique his vision is and how creative he is and the kind of musicians he can we can work with. Um, and I read uh, Lucinda and met her. I read her writings. I felt that we did have a project that was going to be unique and we could bring something very new, something fresh, something profound, and something that could deeply move people on, on a spiritual plane. And so I really embraced the project. And furthermore, you've all on this project more than our previous ones, uh, including me, including me in the recording sessions. And even before the recording sessions, we had lengthy discussions, uh, the three of us, about what instruments to use because that became an important issue. And this was guided by Yuval's research and conversation with experts here in the United States and in India on sound healing and on the chakras. 
So it became a much broader, much deeper, much richer project, and so I'm, I'm just thrilled with it. And the result of it, I'm even more thrilled with. I listen to uh, these pieces every day. Let's have a listen to um, the same solar plexus track with Lucinda's voice, which really is... That was actually um, sacral. I, I, sacral? The, 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 it's the sacral, it's the second, yeah, which with, this, with the... Um, uh, the I, I think... With the sitar. I think I may have given our producer the wrong track then. Um, he may well have the solar one. But let's listen to whatever we have regardless, yeah, sure. because it, it really is. Her voice is just wonderful. Yeah. Welcome to your third chakra. Close your eyes and take three deep breaths. And as you place your attention on your solar plexus, feel the energy at the center of your being. And as you hear the sound of your breath going in and out, feel the music of the third chakra. With your mind's eye, you spin the golden wheel clockwise to awaken your inner fire so you see it burn clearly with passion and strength. Was that the sequel or the solar plexus? That was the solar plexus. That, it the, was. The Apologies. Was before the break with the sitar and that's the sacral and this is the solar plexus the okay devil. yeah i'm sorry about that that was my mistake but it was it was beautiful nonetheless and it gives us yeah. um a chance to hear lucinda's voice <clears throat> whose idea was it to actually get lucinda to do the meditations well it was lucinda's idea she came up with the idea of the, having a text that she would write and read, and all she wanted me to do is compose music that would accompany her voice. Um, that's how it all started. You um, and then it was, and then it was go me, ahead, uh, actually, because some people like guided meditations, not everybody do, does. And so I felt that it gave us the opportunity to do both. To have one that would be guided and one that would be just all instrumental and that, that people could have a choice. So, Yuval, um, Richard indicated before, uh, just a few moments ago, about the complexity, you know, involved in producing this music. I mean, you're very, very careful about the instruments you use. You take advice from India, which are the right ones to use, the musicians that you employ. I mean, how mm. difficult is that to put all that together? Well, it's, it's a big project. This was a large project. This is like, it, it's like producing a whole proper rock album or producing a whole soundtrack for a movie. It's a large project. We had nine live musicians uh, that we recorded in India, in Israel, uh, in Atlanta, in Los Angeles. Um, and and uh, the research, you know, it's not... It's not the kind of project that somebody uh, would call me and say, uh, could you write uh, 10 minutes of reggae or could you write 10 minutes of tango? Uh, they, they asked me to write music for the chakras. Like, who knows what is music for the chakras? <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not really defined. Uh, and, and it was really interesting, Sandy, that when I, I called a master teacher of music therapy in India, who is the head of the School of Sound Healing in India, who I met personally in Delhi, uh, India, three years ago, and he gave me his book, and I gave him my book, and we had a, a very good discussion, and, and, and he invited me to teach in his school, and, and we kept in touch. And he has many students from the West who study online, and then they go to India for some seminars, and they, get, they graduate from his school. And I reached out to him, 
because he's a, he's a master of the use of sound for healing in India, in ancient India, and, and how to use this ancient knowledge nowadays. And I asked him very humbly, would you advise me how to go about it? Would you tell me uh, what kind of ragas, what kind of musical modes of India would would be good to use for the crown chakra versus the sacral chakra or the solar chakra? Could, could, could you advise me? Could you give Stop. me some hints on uh, what would be the right authentic way to go about it that is authentic and loyal to the ancient teaching, teachers of India. And he said to me, um, just go with your intuition. And when I tried to get more information, <laughs> when I tried to get more specifics out of him, he refused. And he explained to me, he said, he said this, he said, there, there have been so many projects of the chakras, and many of them of my students, and all of it is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he, so, he, he was frustrated with his own students. They t- took, a, took a shot at the chakras, and, and it, it's, um, in, in one hand, it's open and undefined musically, and on the other hand, I found partially through his help, but he, when I finally convinced him that I, I am really interested to do something that is authentic and rooted in the ancient teaching of India, when I finally convinced him that that's my intention, he did help me. And uh, with his help and another master from India, uh, I, I managed to find information about what instruments what what ragas would be, uh, what musical modes would be advisable, what uh, musical tone, the tonal center would be advisable. And so uh, I based all of my compositions on that ancient knowledge, plus my own creativity and my own intuition, as he advised me to, to go with my intuition within the boundaries of the ancient traditions. And then producing it with all all the musicians that we got uh, took a long time. I think we worked on this project for two or three years. And then you you have to layer in the um, the subliminal affirmations by Dr. Gold. Um, yeah, there's so many different layers, literally, to this you know to this project. How how difficult is it to keep abreast of all the latest research and incorporate that into what you're producing? Uh, the, the research, uh, for me, the research is, is, is really uh, the foundation of the whole, the whole project. And it's one of the parts that I really enjoy. And in the research stage, I, I work a lot with Dr. Gold that uh, gives me a lot of information from his studies and his experience. So I rely on doctors and scientists and mystics and master teachers. And then I sit with all that information. And since my training is is, as a film composer, that's what I went to school for in Berklee College of Music in in the mid-80s. And uh, I'm based in Los Angeles because I compose music for films. And so my education and my training is to follow the instructions of a film director in regards to what the film director wants or wishes the audience to feel and think at any given moment in the movie. And and I look at the research, and I look at all the information that I got from Lucinda, from the yogis in India, and from Dr. Gold. I look at that research, and I I pretend that that is instructions from a film director that wants me to create an emotional and physical and intellectual effect that would affect the audience intellectually and physically. And so I, that's how I, I go into the composition. Hmm. And, the, and I would um, like to add, too, that, 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 that observing you've all worked with musicians, um, He's able to uh, inspire and elicit from the musicians the spirit of what he's trying to achieve, and that that's a, that's like organized magic. 
to see that uh, it's not just notes on a paper. It's actually a sense and a feeling and an intuition that he's able to draw out of the out of out of master musicians who have their own very active careers. But he brings how, something special out. How do those musicians respond then? Because it must be quite different from what they're usually asked to play. You know, yeah, it is. A, it is a really. Uh, it can be very challenging because, if, uh, for example, the master sitar player is one of the greatest sitar players of India living today. His name is uh, Narayan Ghosh, uh, um, and he's a great, great, great master. And um, he was working in a very humble way with me, uh, really respecting that I'm the composer and I'm the music producer, and he really tried to follow any instruction that I gave him and to really have no ego and no opinion of anything by himself. He tried to be a vehicle, and I really respect him. In my eyes, he is a greater master than I thought than, and that I heard about him before I got to work with him. And now that I work with him, I know that he's a great master because he, he, when, it, when it came to the, to the session, he completely availed himself to be a, an instrument in my hands. And I'm an ocean away. I'm in Los Angeles communicating with him through Skype while he's recording in uh, a great studio in uh, Mumbai. And um, and what I wanted him to do was not something that he usually does. Uh, I, I got him to play, in my humble opinion, one of the most gentle and tender sitar solo that I ever heard in any recording of sitars. And I, I listened to many, 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 many great masters of sitar. But for the second chakra, which has to do with intimacy, it has to do with the quality of the water and flow, uh, I wrote something for him that is all about flow, all about quality of water and delicate intimacy. And, I, and, and that's, that is the quality that I strive to get out of him in the recording session. It was not easy. It was not obvious. But he really wanted to give me what I envisioned. And it was beautiful, and he did it. And um, before I chose him, I, I listened to many recordings of sitar masters, and I, even some sitar masters that were recommended to me to hire for this job, I listened to their recordings, and I just didn't feel that they have that quality of flow, delicate flow. And when I heard uh, Narayan Ghosh, Master Ghosh, uh, I heard that quality. But in the session, I, I wanted to drive him even further than, than what he ever recorded towards that quality that I envisioned for the second chakra, and, and we managed to do it. So that, that's how I work. You know, that, that is part of the musical producer job. And um, I've done a lot of work as a musical producer. I've worked with many Hollywood um, musicians that played on Schindler List and played on Star Trek, you know, and and who played on all the different recordings in in the record industry and the movie industry. And and I I have a lot of experience of bringing an artist to give the most art that they have, beyond what they even know that they have. It's, it's just, it's like being a, a, a theater director. And that part of the, the job, when you direct a musician, and you have to do it in a very delicate way. You have to do it, you need to inspire them to bring out something that you need, rather than to tell them to do it, rather than uh, force them to do it. Because if they, if they don't want to give it, they will not give it. So you have to do it in a very um, – you have to work through the imagination. You have to kind of get them to be on your side and really sweat to reach some, the gold, the really gold that is deep in their soul, and to give it to you through the music that you wrote. And the I'm going to hold you there, Yuval. You know, the flute player, Yuval. by the way. I'm going to have to hold you there so that we can go to break. You're listening to What Is Going On. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, and I'm speaking with award-winning composer Yuval Ron and integrative health practitioner Dr. Richard Gold. 
about the latest breakthroughs involving sound, science and medicine. We'll be back with more after this break. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, this is recording artist and composer Yuval Ron inviting you to a voyage through the chakras, a new double album of guided meditations to transform your life, a sublime musical medicine for nourishing inner peace and reaching to your higher virtues. Get it now at metamindfulnessmusic.com. M E T T A mindfulnessmusic.com Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. Welcome back. Dr. Richard Gold, it's clear that we're moving from the outmoded age of chemical medicine to the age of vibrational medicine. Um, what research would you like to see being done that no one else is currently doing? Oh, what a question, Sandy. Uh, my my basic interest is more not so much treating disease as how we stay healthy. And um, I think a key part of that, and I think where music and sound could be a, a tremendous resource, is the ability of sound, and uh, specifically sound that, that created for the purpose of, of creating a meditative state, of helping people slow the stream of thoughts in their brains down, to help people get a sense of the voices that are in their head and what's the true, the true nature of their self, which really isn't the internal dialogue or the voice that's telling us what to do. And uh, things that we can measurably then see what, that enhancement of white blood cell counts in the body, uh, reduction of stress, lowering of, lowering of blood pressure, increase in cognitive function, um, uh, these sorts of things. So, again, my personal interest, is, but it's, and it's really a hard thing to um, – statistically evaluate something that doesn't happen in a sense, but I'm much more interested in helping people stay well than the uh, treatment of specific disease. I certainly see value in the treatment of specific disease, but you asked me what, what my heart would sing to, and that mm -hmm. is how do we prevent disease and how do we enhance consciousness and how do we, how we evolve as human beings? Uh, because I'm, I'm quite cer concerned that if we stay on the same path and we think that we're not done its potential to keep involving evolving as human beings, we run the risk of, uh, of destroying ourselves. What about you, Yuval? Is there an area that you would like to see highlighted? I would like to see more research on the kind of music that Meta Mindfulness Music is putting out there. Um, I think we need more and more medical research and clinical trials uh, that, that would prove to the masses that sound has a medicinal value that people could uh, overcome different uh, um, conditions that there's certain remedies 
that uh, offered through music that it certainly can lower one's uh, blood pressure and help uh, one sleep and, and, and help the immune system get boosted. And so I'd like to see more research done in hospitals and, and becoming available uh, for the white public to know. Yeah, okay. I, and I think that the idea of integrative medicine is important here, which is if we do have uh, healing sounds in waiting rooms of, of medical clinics, we do have healing sounds in surgical theaters, um, are we going to enhance outcomes by, in, by including sound in the environment? I think there's tremendous potential there. Mm, uh, yeah, far more than I think they are even beginning to consider. I came across um, a page while doing some research earlier um, on experiment.com, um, which said it had completed its goal to crowdfund an experiment to discover if music can influence the longevity of human blood cells. And I think um, a chap called John Stuart Reed was involved with that, and he's done a lot of work with cymatics. Um, so. Obviously, there is so much research being done now, um, and I think it's one of the most exciting areas that we could be looking at because it is so natural, it is there, it is free in a sense, <laughs> um, yes. and and it's incredibly effective. Plus, if we go back in history, you know, I mean, the ancients knew a long time ago that you know frequency and sound were so valuable to health. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, and that was what triggered our first production with the healing sounds from the Chinese medical point of view, is in the first uh, ancient text of Chinese medicine, the Yellow Emperor's Classic from about 236 B.C., already each of the five elements was assigned a key. And that was what you've all composed around. So that's it's the vibration of, that, of that, those, that tone which affects that element. And that's how we build our, re our remedies, is that if sleep, if a sleep is usually a result of a disharmony between the water and the fire elements, we, we wove those two elements together sonically in our music to facilitate sleep. And I think that that, that example can go through a, a many different ramifications to help treat people's common ailments. Because anytime someone takes, ingests a pharmaceutical for a problem, um, there's going to be side effects. And oftentimes those are deleterious side effects. And if we can avoid the use of one drug one night, we're having benefit for that person. And then if we multiply that over and over again into the thousands and millions, the benefit can be remarkable. I read another piece today um, which was very interesting about cymatics. And uh, this particular woman was um, said that there's a lot of research that suggests that um, cymatics is how we first began to develop language, um, you know, because the the uh, influence of the vibration um, creating patterns um, created images, and from the images grew the words. And when we think about words, we you know think about the work of Masaru Emoto, um, water and ice crystals, and how they changed, and the experiments that have been done saying you know, certain words, um, directing it towards a, a rice seed growing in water in a jar. And, uh, you know, you say loving words and it grows strong and healthy. And you say uh, unloving words and it kind of becomes somewhat distorted. It really is, dies. yeah, it's an area that we really need to be paying attention to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, yes. I'm going to try to create a bit a visual image here, which is if you put uh, sand particles on a tray and then um, send music of notes through that, it actually it organizes in what we would consider mandalas. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So yeah. The, the vibrations of music it creates these sacred symbols. Um, it's just quite remarkable to imagine, much less to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's, so, so, yeah. and that's what semantics is. Uh, uh, and I think that explains why human beings we all feel good uh, when we hear harmonious, harmonious music. Uh, we yeah. may have slightly different tastes for different times. You know, we, in a certain mood, we need a certain kind of music. In another mood, we need another kind of music. And, and that's all fine. But, but in general, music provides so much satisfaction and, and, a, and a good feeling, a good vibe in people. And, and we don't quite know fully 
Why? But this thematic, which is a real phenomenon in the natural world, we can see it, uh, tells us that, teaches us that when we listen to music, the sound vibrations of the music enter our bodies and reorganize the little cells in our bodies in harmonious shapes. So no wonder we feel harmonized, we feel attuned, we feel good, we feel a sense of beauty, inner, inner beauty. We don't know those words. We don't define it. We just say, oh, I, I just saw an amazing concert. I just, mm. oh, this, this was such a great experience. And we, and we feel invigorated. We know it was a good experience. That's why we go to concerts again. But what we are not aware of is that the concert reorganized our body in a harmonic way. Mm. And this it, is why. You know, yeah. This is why mantras and chanting is, is you know, so popular. Um, on that topic, we have a third clip from Voyage Through the Chakras, which features singing and chanting. Yuval, can you tell us a little bit about this track before we play it? Yes, this is the uh, the heart chakra, very appropriate for today, uh, uh, Valentine's Day. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and what happened here in the track, very, very quickly, I, I wrote it for flute, for Bansuri, the uh, wooden... Uh, flute from India, and the master of the Bansuri, uh, Shai Bensur, uh, recorded it for us. But in the recording, he was studying the notes that I sent to him, and he didn't quite prepare for the session, so he didn't know the music well because he didn't prepare it at all. He just came unprepared and looked at the music. And in, in a way to, to teach himself the music, he sang it to himself with with uh, Sanskrit letters that are signed in, in India to each note. And and Dr. Gold and myself heard him rehearsing, just teaching himself the music by chanting it, and we thought that it was so beautiful that we begged him to to record himself singing the music in addition to playing the music on flute. And that's how we ended up having this beautiful, moving heart chakra vocal part just through this very, very happy uh, accident. Let's listen to that track now. I can feel my body vibrate into those longer, deeper tones. I get the chills listening to that. I've heard it hundreds of times. Yeah. Moving, we, are, we are almost out of time now, unfortunately. Um, I'd like to know why, on a voyage through the chakras, it says that for best results, one should listen daily for 40 days and then repeat as desired. Why 40 days? Well, research has shown, especially in the meditative realm, and this was research done at Harvard, that after 40 days, we begin to, <clears throat> we begin to see structural changes in the brain itself toward more balanced and healthy states. And so that's our way of trying to encourage people to stick with the program, and that's going to create, actually create therapeutic benefit for their brains. And in 40 days, we're able to establish new habits that will be more long-lasting. So that was the suggestion we offered uh, to our listeners. 
Yvelle on Richard Gold. Um, there's never enough time to talk about all of the things that we want to talk about when we get together. But thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much thank for having us, Sandy. It's always a pleasure. Thank yes, you, Sandy. Good questions. Thank you. Oh, for more information, to you. you too, Yvonne. Um, we'll have to do it again. For more information on Voyage Through the Chakras and other recordings discussed tonight, visit Meta mindfulnessmusic.com and that is meta with two t's i'm sandy sedgbeer thanks for joining me today i look forward to being with you at the same time next week till then it's goodbye from me